People who reach out to do self-realization, cultivation and trauma release work very often have tried coaches and therapists of different kinds before asking for my support. And the stories of what they've tried follow certain grooves which are uh, predictably not enough to get the job done and sometimes just altogether ineffective. This channel is Meditation Amsterdam, my name is Pablo, and today I want to offer a list of certain things to look out for in uh, coaches or therapists that you're working with so that you don't unnecessarily waste valuable time and prolong suffering by following modalities of healing that are uh, incomplete or altogether ineffective. And Perhaps the best place to start is coaches and therapists that just talk. There is still out there, believe it or not, despite all the information that has been now a day shared about uh, somatic based therapy, um, coaches that insist on only doing a kind of counselor type of discussions in which you talk about issues, memories, how you think they affected you and spend time analyzing these things, trying to get to the bottom of it. Of course, emotions are also uh, felt and discussed, but, um, but the depth of the work is highly analytical and narrative based, memory based. There is often uh, a lot of findings in this, um, in this type of work. It's not altogether useless actually, it can be very valuable. However, for all you get to find out with all this digging, which can be quite substantial, the amount of actual emotional and energetic resolution that you achieve can be incredibly limited. Uh, you found out why you were traumatized or why your life is not what you'd like it to be. But at the end of the day, nothing substantial really changes. You still feel like you might be missing out or not fitting in. Uh, not feeling at home or feeling like your boundaries are still as poor as they were before you knew what caused them to be that way. So um, if you find yourself working with a counselor that just talks, my advice would be not necessarily to stop, but to complement that with other types of modalities that address other levels of your system, such as the energetic, the emotional and the somatic level and um, that would make things far more comprehensive. The next one in line, which I think is responsible for a huge amount of wasted time is people who engage in more um, inner child type of work, but insist on doing so based on visualization all these visualization type of, um, of modalities. Some of them take the form of imagine yourself as a little child uh, and what that little child would be uh, feeling at this, uh, at this moment. Others are along the lines of uh, feel yourself, feel that there is a ball of light or imagine that there's a ball of light or imagine that you are arriving to uh, your secret place, much as in the movie Fight Club, where is your safe place? or your spirit animal or things of this kind, anything to do with visualization. Now, visualization is not altogether, uh, it is, is not, is not altogether ineffective. It can be very effectively used to evoke something. Once that something is effectively evoked, it can also be used to maintain that. But the question is, are you able to make the transformation effective in a somatic and energetic kind of way? Or are you using the visualization to create entire worlds in your mind, which are yet another point of departure, another disassociation away, away from the emotional distress and somatic discomfort that you need to feel in order to resolve things. So if visualization is occupying uh, your entire mental field, your entire focus while you're doing things, you're not getting anywhere, it's useless. Visualizing things is not the right way 
to go, not, not in and of itself. It needs to create a somatic result that, that, that can then be worked with in order for things to be effective. Um, there is uh, also the type of uh, coach who will try to uh, find the sunny side of the street, try to prop you up, try to uh, get you to uh, believe in yourself again, when in fact your entire neurology is saying no to that message because the body doesn't believe it. I've made videos in the past about the fact that positive affirmations and positive thinking is only effective when the body believes the statement. And in order for the body to believe the statement, you need to go and clear out that in the body which denies the statement. And unless you do that, you could stay on the thinking level of the problem, trying to uh, make affirmations of the kind that says, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm effective in the world, people like me, all, all these kind of things, and looking in the mirror and, and telling yourself you're a go-getter or having your therapist say that to you, when in your heart of hearts, you know something very wrong needs resolution and your body won't believe it and it won't stop throwing messages of perhaps anxiety, distress, or you name it, unless you address the problem at a deeper level as opposed to just trying to prop you up. One variant of this trying to prop you up is, is trying to establish good habits and good boundaries. Now, I'm not against that. It is very often the case that you need good boundaries to create a container for the actual work to happen. But to say that by establishing good external boundaries and exercising those on, on the level of interaction only externally, you've solved the problem is kidding yourself, is not going to solve the problem because it's not the lack of boundaries that makes you get into trouble. It's the fact that your internal trauma makes you betray your own boundaries. That's the problem. So that even if boundaries are set in place, the question is, would you have the juice to enforce them? Or are you going to be the first one to uh, take them down because you feel like you cannot handle um, emotional tension or um, uh, fear of abandonment? or things of that kind. It is we who uh, betray our own boundaries and therefore the setting of boundaries can be a helpful tactic in the short term, but you need to do far deeper work than that in order to address the real problem. Um, of course, it goes without mention that uh, most new age and esoteric type of uh, therapies such as uh, you know, palm readings, um, uh, most uh, astrology, unless it's done by someone who is truly, truly qualified and perhaps clairvoyant. I, I have not met anyone, but I don't discard it whatsoever. I, I think it might be a real thing. Um, but most esoteric things that you get involved in are an escape from reality. They are not empowering. And even astrology uh, itself can be a kind of escape in which you surrender your, your autonomy, your willpower and your ability to be effective in the world to causes that are far away and uncontrollable like the stars, right? So, um, you know, Saturn is in retrograde this week and therefore I'm having a, a shitty time at the office or, or, or things of that kind. You have essentially outsourced your agency to uncontrollable forces out there that hold incredible sway over uh, your system. And once again, uh, perhaps they do, right? I, I, I would definitely not um, uh, deny that they, that they might. But the question here is not so much do they or do, or do they not, but how are you rolling with those situations and are you doing the work to clear your system off of uh, all the uh, hangups and disconnections that you have in order for this to uh, take place? Um, on the other side of the spectrum, there may be people dealing with trauma very directly and they may be dealing with trauma so heavy handedly that it just re-triggers and re-traumatizes you. We could even place some uh, ill-informed or ill-executed psychedelic um, uh, modalities behind this because these are very forceful means. They are means that open you uh, where otherwise your mind would just try to protect you, that the psychedelics would force you open. And uh, there's been uh, many a story of people who become at least temporarily psychotic during these things. The same goes for 10-day Vipassana type of uh, retreats, which I can actually uh, attest to. 
and the same goes for therapists that are just too heavy handed, throwing people into the deep waters of um, uh, triggering uh, uh, trauma and, and, and eliciting traumatic memories or feelings without having created enough of a strong container to, for people to be able to ground themselves, be able to regulate their nervous system as they are going through the evoking of traumatic um, uh, memories or feelings so that there can actually be a transformative experience, which might be very uncomfortable, but it is nonetheless uh, contained and uh, so that people also have the ability to integrate it afterwards, as opposed to just being left in, in uh, a worse state that they were because now the, your adrenals are um, all over the place and you feel like your neurology has been essentially laid bare and raw and, um, and you don't have the tools to uh, be able to rein yourself back in, to be able to contain and to feel like you can go through the transformation process in a, um, in a well-advised way. Um, and then I left one for last that is kind of nuanced, but I've heard it time and again, and I've seen it time and again in um, all the modalities that are out there, certifications and things of this kind. And it is the idea that you have a modality, it might be Reiki, it by, might be um, uh, some sort of body-based therapy, it might be mindfulness-based stress reduction, right? John Cabot sings, you know, formulaic things to, to do. And many people who have not gone through the full process of healing themselves and coming to a depth of understanding of what it is that we're trying to do and have it applied to themselves for a real opening and a real awakening and cleanup and realization uh, to come to pass. They haven't done that process themselves. They come across these modalities uh, and with a desire to help themselves and others, they go and get certified mindfulness-based stress reduction uh, certified therapists. Or, oh, I follow the method of so-and-so. I follow the method of so-and-so, this method, that method. Anyone who follows a method from beginning to end, not necessarily, but has a real risk of not having scratched the surface of that method to understand the principles behind the method, which are going to be the principles behind any other method that is effective, as a matter of fact. Of course, there are different inroads of those methods and different modalities of how to apply it. But the fundamentals, the real principles behind what heals um, someone at the end of the day are the same. And if you have somebody who only knows one method or has been even worse, collecting methods out there and following them in a formulaic way without doing the work on themselves deep enough or without coming to a real self-realization through that process and a real deepening of their insight and their intuitive ability to connect with um, the person who's being coached or treated is going to be ineffective. They lack the depth. They lack the, the intuitive depth to go where you need to go and resolve what you need to do because you understand the principles of what you're trying to do and the methods become only a vehicle for that. They don't become what you do. So I'm a little bit skeptical about formulaic methods because they are on the one hand a good distillation of something that somebody found out to be incredibly effective and they went through that process. But to the degree that they are distillation, they, as they become widespread, they also have a very high risk of becoming formulaic and becoming just something that anyone over a weekend or, or a number of, uh, you know, a couple of months or whatever can now become certified. And the depth is lacking, the understanding in, in, in your own skin is, is lacking. And um, without that, it's very difficult that anything will actually work. Uh, I've seen that as well. People simply trying to force a method when clearly, you know, you've, you've hit a roadblock where you require a different type of approach or simply to listen, or maybe your interlocutor just needs to be fully acknowledged for a moment without trying to do anything. So um, these are some of the most common things that I have heard from people who come with a mild or very high degree of frustration saying, I've tried all this and is not working and um, and what's interesting is uh, despite the fact that they didn't necessarily work the fact that they've engaged in all of this 
somehow, interestingly enough, primes people so that within a, t a session or two uh, working together with me have seen uh, very quick results. So it's not like these methods are totally ineffective. Um, the question is, uh, how long do you need to continue with something that is not fully delivering on the kind of opening and realization and healing that you're looking for? So uh, I'm very curious about uh, your experiences on, on uh, the topic. Uh, do share them in the comment section if you feel like it. And as usual, if you think that these are uh, videos and content that would benefit other people, then your liking, sharing and subscribing makes the content far more available, the channel more visible and makes me much more motivated to continue putting these out there. I'll be back with more as usual. Thanks for listening. Cheerio. Bye bye.